Driver review time. It's the second one now, and it looks like it's going to be pretty decent. Let's see what that is next. Welcome to Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, and this is where we do golf club repairs, golf club reviews, and golf club fittings. All so your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom so more of this information gets out to the YouTube universe. Now, we do a live stream, and it's on Mondays at 5.30 p.m., 17.30 for the Across the Pond. On Mondays, join us. It's the same stuff. You'll sure to like it. All right, so we finished all the iron reviews. Done. Lots of good irons out there. A couple of surprisers. Uh, in particular, from a forgiving standpoint, the Cleveland XL iron, right? They have the halos, but then the iron. Uh, decent little iron, you know, for getting started, wanting a little bit more forgiveness, it's a good iron, right? Well, now they have a new driver and they have a new hybrid. Now, this is only the driver review, okay? I'm not going to test too many hybrids. I'm going to test them. I'm just not going to get them out here. So if you got any questions on them, throw them in the show notes and we'll talk about them down in there. Or you can visit me on the uh, live stream and then we can do it right there. All right, so what are we what are we reviewing? Well, it is the Cleveland Launcher XL2, all right, XL2. And it is a, supposedly it's an update from the Cleveland Launcher XL. And so what did they do? If you can guess what they did, the word AI comes into play. <laughs> like they all do, right? All the, so they use computer engineering, let's just call it that, computer engineering, and covering tons and tons of different shots in order to figure out where to put the most forgiveness into the face. That's what they've done, okay? Now, what else have they done? Well, they've thinned out, they've, this has got a very large footprint, all right? When you have a large footprint, meaning around this way at a dress, so if you're looking at it this way, this takes up a lot of real estate, okay? When you do that, that means this has to get narrower. That's just the physics of the design. So why did they do that? Well, it's to draw back the center of gravity. And the idea is when you draw back the center of gravity, you get this nice higher launch. It becomes way more forgiving. MOI starts to come into play where it doesn't want to twist off of center. A lot of, you know, it can be a lot of good things. Now, one of the things it can introduce is spin, all right? That's why you see some of the players' clubs with the weights all the way toward the front. All right, so there, that's the design 101 stuff. So what did these guys do? Well, number one, they have the rebound frame. All right, the rebound frame is where the, it's like a frame within a frame. So you have the face, and then right behind it, and I don't know what the dimension is right behind it, but somewhere behind it, I'd say about yay far, there's basically another face. So you can say face within a face. The idea is that it's supporting the first face so that it can be a little more springy, a little bit nicer in off-center hits. It's been done before and it worked. So we're gonna see if it works in this one. Now, another one is the, the frame itself. All right, so what they did is in the frame, it, it's all about supporting of this face. What they did is they made the crown very, very thin. We've heard that one before. And they made, it, they made it thinner so that they could put more framework into the club to support these faces. And, and that's what they've done, okay? And it's put it around, and it's a pretty sharp look at a dress. It's a pretty sharp look in the bag. And they come in two styles. They come in a regular style and a draw bias style. And that's what we're going to cover. So what else can you find in this golf club? Well, it's not necessarily in the golf club head, but in the golf club shaft. They put an eight gram counterweight in this thing. What does that do? Well, to me, what it does is it, it makes the takeaway a lot more stable. It allows you to track where the club is in your hands, and it also balances this club out. This is a 46 inch club. Now it's only supposed to be 45 and a half. This came out 46. And when you do that, you can get a lot of swing weight. When you counterbalance, it makes the club a little bit lighter, puts the weight in your hands so you don't you know, have this tremble and it's easier to follow and it makes for a more solid hit. We'll find that out later too. 
All right, the very final thing is its adjustability. Its adjustability is from nine to 12 degrees. They say there's 12 settings in this because it's a half degree increments and then there is some uh, settings that are flat, okay? Now, this is a, not a cogged setting. This is a, a shaft adapter piece. So what happens here is when you go to make the loft increase, meaning that you go from a nine to a 12, the face will start doing this. If you're, you know, let's assume, let's, for the sake of discussion, let's say this is a 10.5, it just how happens it is. And you wanna make it into a 12, the face will start doing like this. If you wanna make it into a nine, the face will start doing like that. Not only will it start doing like this, but the lie angle will come up and vice versa for going low, it will go down. Now it's not a secret, I will give Cleveland a ton of credit here. If you go to their website and you look at all the stuff that we're just talking about, it is all there. It tells you how to adjust the club, what you can expect, some of the technology that's in it, and, and different shafts. Now, there's a freebie involved in this. Freebie. <laughs> and you, you qualify, and it says on the website, you qualify for an Arcos disc. And Arcos, if you guys don't know, is a way to track your stats. If you get it for free and it's a very low price, so it's probably, I'm sure there's a monthly subscription after a bit, in order to keep maintaining your stats, it might be a deal, right? It very well may be a deal. All right, so we have the standard, and then we have the draw, right? The draw. What's the difference between the standard and the draw? Well, <laughs> if you were to look at it, the, uh, if you were to look down at it, almost nothing, all right? The only difference you could tell just by the sheer cosmetics of it is that one says draw bias right here, and it's very blacked out. It's, almost, it's a murdered out kind of thing, so you would never know it. Now, what else is it? From a, man, from a measuring standpoint, the face is closed, okay? The face just naturally comes into a closed position, and the club's total weight is about 10 grams lighter. So that allows you to, you know, it, the idea is to help you get the club shut at a dress. So that's their philosophy. All right, so before we hit this, we always go to the shop. All right, before we go and do any of this, we gotta go to the shop and figure out what we're hitting. So what did I find? I found 46 inches, I found D3, I found 318 in weight. Now that's a different one. You normally don't get like a total weight or a total mass on a website. This guy, these guys gave it to you. The fact that we found swing weight on a website was pretty impressive too. You're, that's starting to disappear as well. Now, when they say flex, all they're doing is saying regular stiff and that kind of thing. So what did I find with this one? I had a tensai blue in the stiff and it came out stiff. So that was a good thing too. Okay, what else did I find? I found D3, oh, I found 10.5 and I found uh, 59 degrees, okay? So what's it supposed to be? Well, it's supposed to be 45. It's supposed to be 10.5, which it was. It's supposed to be 60s, 59. I'll give a, a degree either way, that's a, that's a pass. It was 316 in weight, so two grams. That's a pass all day long. That's, in fact, I'm considering that to be dead on. And uh, I think that's all we need to worry about. And the flex came out right. Yeah, so the only thing I would say that was unacceptable in this whole thing was the length. And they, it was right, it was bumping up against 46 inches. Now, I can give a quarter of an inch for length based on the butt cap of the grip but I can't give a half of an inch. So that was the only one. So I did choke up when I hit it. So now, let's go hit it. Welcome back to the test of the Cleveland XL2 driver. All right, so what did we do? We hit several shots, and we're, this is gonna be the results. We're, we hit, I hit six on both drivers as a comparison, because I get asked that a lot. And what I did is I used my gamer. And I, this is the first time I brought out my gamer, so this ought to be a lot of fun to see what we do. So I hit six shots. One was so pathetic, I didn't even want to leave it in here. So we got five shots. So this is what the Cleveland looks like right here. Got a couple going down the middle and my tremendous pull that I've known for even when I'm hitting my irons. Okay. So this is something I really want to get into here. And normally I don't go right to here. However, I want to show you this. This is an incredible result as far as hitting the golf club. 151, 151, 151, 151, 152. Uh, I don't think you can hit a club any better than that, right? Any better than that. 
Now we are hitting it, you know, on the average of 92 and some change, which is a little slow. And the reason being is 92, almost 90, 92, 94, 94. All right. And then the spin rates were actually very, very low, which I didn't think would be would be happening with that CG that we were talking about. So if we look at all the results, what do we see? We had a 228, we'll just say a 230, 242 carry with a lateralized more to the right than I was anything else with an extraordinarily good swing uh, smash factor, a great spin rate, and I was getting a good up on the attack angle. So where did it land? It landed right there. That's a solid pattern, right? A very, very, very solid pattern. Uh, so now if we're going to do what I normally do and just pair it down to three, we'll take that one out and that one out. And it's even better, right? Even better. So, it, I mean, it, it's a very, very solid shot. And I have to say, there was a couple I thought for certain were going to be poor, and they ended up very, very good. So the rebound frame on this thing is working. Uh, the shots that felt very, very strong were rewarded with a good number. And the shots that did not feel good were still rewarded with a very good number. Okay, so we go into my driver, the gamer. Of course, I am wide right, wide left <laughs> on this guy. And we're going to take out, we're, I'm just going to take him out by distance, okay? So let's take out this guy right here. And we'll take out that guy right there. And then we'll go back here and see what it looks like. All right, nice and nice and consistent distance, but a little bit more wide right than that one. Okay, so now what does it look like from a numbers point of view? All right, so four yards difference, four yards difference. Hitting very close to the same, swing a little bit faster with mine is because it's the gamer. That's not unexpected. Everything was pretty close. So a four, a four yards difference to see that. So you can either see this or you can see that, right? So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for distance and you think you have enough control, maybe the other one. If you're looking for a little bit of more control, find it more of the fairway, this is the way to go, right? This would be the way to go. So Cleveland's jumping up in there, and uh, we'll see, right? So very, very well done. So let's go back and see who this would fit. All right, so that, huh, you know what? That It's an eye-opener for me for my gamer. It was an eye-opener for me and this club. I've never had a club where I hit every shot what would be designated as perfect. Using 1.5 as a standard of a perfect shot using flight scope, and it is a measure between club head speed and, and ball speed, getting 1.5, you pretty much max out the driver. Well, I'm starting to see 1.51, 1.52 now, and that's what we saw. And so what did it feel like? Well, you know what? There, out of those several hits that I hit, there was a couple I could have swore were on the toe. I could have swore it was on the toe. And one of the first shots I ever hit, and straight, and straight. So what do I think about this? This is a driver that would fit a truckload of brandy spanking new golfers, and with the right shaft could be a decent weapon for a lot of other golfers as well. Is it gonna win distance contests? No, but for keeping you in the middle of the fairway, and if you don't mind giving up, because we're only four yards difference, right? It's a half a club-ish, and if that's vital to you, then no, you're not going to do that. But if you're hitting it far enough and distance is not an option, putting this thing in your bag to keep in the middle of the fairway or knowing where the ball is going to go, that's a real plus, right? So if you do, go get fit, right? Go get fit. The right length, the right lie, the right loft, the right golf ball, right? The right shaft It will make all the difference so that... You're going to like golf more, right? That's in the whole idea is we want you to like golf more. And when you like golf more, what happens? You're playing better, right? So that's what we want. Okay, so if you like what you saw, like and subscribe. Hit that bell down below and don't, join us for our live streams. And as coming more, we have uh, at least two more driver reviews that I'm pretty sure you will like. And don't forget the live stream. And as always, let's see your scores go low.